Good morning guys, MC Procrastinate here for another two minute video as part of a two minute series. If you don't know what a two minute series is, check the link below and you'll find out all about it. Topic of today, Triumph 675. So Triumph 675, let's start off where we're at today. The Triumph 675 is an amazing looking sports bike that was introduced in 2006. Now really this bike was brought in to compete against uh, um, the sports bikes that come from Japan, you know, your 600, your R6, your Kawasaki ZX6 and so on. Um, Triumph really struggled up to 2006 to find a viable sports bike that could actually do this. So let's rewind and go back to the very beginning, which was in 2000. Triumph entered the sports, super sports bike with a TT600 Daytona. Now, there was a multitude of colors. I actually looked at this bike way back in the early days of starting out. And the reason I looked at this is because they were really, really cheap. I will say, looking at the bike now, as you can see from the images, it's a really, really dated bike. However, the concept behind it was this. Triumph were entering a market of the super sports, and they really, really needed a bike that could compete against the Japanese. Historically, Triumph had always produced a triple, but they needed something a little bit more different. So they decided to reinvent themselves by produ producing a super sport bike that would be um, a 600cc, but more importantly, an inline four. Now, the first bike, the TT600, as you can see from the pictures, it's not the best looking bike, um, but of course you have to put that in context way back to 2000. It was reasonably, you know, I guess, aesthetically pleasing, I suppose, for the time period. But it didn't do particularly successful on their first release. They had um, control engine mapping problems, etc. And they had to do revises to the ECU. Um, it met with mixed responses. Anyway, all the time while they were releasing this bike, they, um, they moved on to produce in 2003 to 2005 the Daytona 6. 50, so that's the Daytona 650. Now the 650 actually doesn't stand for, um, 650 doesn't indicate the brake horsepower of the bike, it was really just a model derivative, okay? It was still a 600cc um, at around about 110 brake horsepower, which again wasn't a huge difference between I think the 103, 104 brake horsepower of the previous model. Again, this bike went from 2003 to 2005. Again, this bike wasn't particularly successful. And some of the reason was that, that Triumph moved away from their heritage. They moved away from the knowledge and the expertise they gained in the triple field and tried to conform to the competition as opposed to the other way around. But what they also did was they went from their normal aesthetics of producing bikes that have rounded edges, from producing bikes that have more typically rounded edges to more angular edges because that was the thing at the time. And again, that just didn't really match. So fortunately, some people got together within Triumph to try and think of a way how they could produce something that is gonna be a Japanese killer, so to speak, but really sort of inherently bring the sportsmanship and the want for these types of bikes across the kind of um, motorcycle racing industry. So the Triumph, this led to the Triumph 675, which was released in 2006 at 123 brake horsepower. It might have just been a little bit less for the early models, but the current models are 123 brake horsepower. So the bike on its first release was met with great response. It was a fantastic looking bike. It came with an underseat exhaust. It had curved lines. It looked just amazing. It looked really ahead of its time. It was very, very, quite a unique bike. And importantly, it was a triple. So the great thing was, now we've got this Prime 675 and it went out. People got to test ride this. You've got MCN saying this is probably the best UK bike ever produced and so on. And they weren't the only ones. So there was a huge gathering coming behind this bike that's going to support it moving forward. You had privateers basically um, buying the bike and going out and racing in um, competitions such as the TT and it was extremely successful. In 2006 and 2007 it won the super sports category in the master bike um, competition. So that was a great win. 
And then, of course, through time, right up to today, they had numerous revisions. In 2011, they introduced the 675R model. And effectively, what they did with the R model and the logic behind it was, hey, we've got a really great bike. We don't need to increase and spend money modifying the um, components in the engine to make it go faster. Let's just provide it with some better components to make it um, perform better when we're actually racing it. So what they did was they introduced um, all in rear suspension, front suspension, of course adjustable suspension, all in steering damper, and importantly Brembo bake brakes for that additional braking. So guys, the Triumph 675 has been, in the end, a very, very successful bike. And I'll be quite interested to see where this bike goes in the long term. Um, it's been around now for over 10 years. It's got a huge following. It's a great bike, and there's not many people out there that would actually fault it. So, what's your thoughts on the Triumph 675? Is it a bike you've ever wanted? For now, guys, I'm Steve Crusty, alright.